Well, I think in response to this question, the, the key is, do, can we do something that's progressive? I think that's really the key. You know, we look at imposing a force like ground reaction force to the body, to the foot. If our foot is set up a certain way, it really does uh, put us in potentially a certain situation where it might be more aggressive for the body in terms of load. And we need to take more of a progressive approach. The, the two things that we need to realize is that in the foot, and in any joint for that matter, we look at joint position and, and joint motion. So in relation to the question, this idea of high arches or a fallen arch is really talking about the joint positions, where the joints or where the bones are aligned and structured relative to a loading pattern. So if we're thinking about a high arch, and you know we take the analogy of a foot, if we start to increase the arch of the foot, especially the medial arch of the foot, then what happens is if I'm locked into a high arch position, then the joint motion uh, associated with a high arch may be actually an inability for me to pronate. So if we're thinking about a high arch and we're thinking about the ability for the foot to load effectively, a high arch, a low arch, a neutral arch needs the ability to load towards the midline. So it's really not necessarily taking a look at the arch itself in terms of joint position, but maybe even more specifically, what type of motion can, can come out of that joint position. So if we're talking about a high arch, that's the joint positions. The joint motions are going to be the loading patterns that we see. So if a person has a high arch, that's only one of the pieces of information that we need. The next question is, can they actually load? Can they actually have that high arch that can collapse in in order to facilitate the reactions that are going to come from the foot all the way up the chain in order for me to dissipate forces from the ground and from the foot before they get to the knee and they get to the lower back. So the idea is, if I have proper and adequate motion in my high arch, well that's a plus. And when I have that plus, then all of a sudden I can take a shoe that can allow and foster that loading pattern in through the arch. And then I can start to run correctly as we saw in that, uh, that lecture about uh, footwear and function. Then if I start to have a midfoot strike on the, on the outside, the lateral part of the foot, then that has the ability to actually then uh, have the athlete or have the individual progress a little quicker. If, for instance, though, in contrary to that, if we have a high arch and now there's an inability for that foot to load, then all of a sudden we're going to have to take some measures to be able to progress them into the idea of running. And a lot of times we think of the shoe as being an optimal place to start. A you know, motion control shoe, a high arch shoe, an orthotic that we put in there. And these are all strategies that we can take, but it doesn't matter what type of interface we put into the foot, whether it be a shoe, an orthotic, uh, or something of that nature, we still must be able to foster proper function of the foot. So in a training conditioning application, we wouldn't run that quickly. Uh, we wouldn't run that much. So we would avoid that too quick, too soon, too much philosophy, and we would start to bring back uh, the exposure to running, the exposure to the volume of running that may incite some sort of soft tissue injury. The next thing is we will want to begin to mobilize the foot and the ankle in order for it to be able to move adequately. So that's the joint motion that we talked about. So if we're you know, blessed with this joint position, it's a high arch for instance, then we want to actually foster some joint motions that can decelerate and dissipate ground reaction force. Uh, equal to that is a fallen arch. We've got to assess where the joints are. In this case, they would be collapsed in. And if there's no available joint motions because we've exhausted it and we're living at the end range of loading pattern with a collapsed arch, for instance, then every time we hit the ground, there's no capabilities of the foot now to be a shock absorber because we've exhausted it all because of the joint positions. In that instance, again, we're going to have egregious loads to the knee and to the hip and potential problems in terms of soft, injury, uh, soft tissue injuries. So even with a collapsed arch, the whole idea is we need to reform that secondary curve of the body. We need to actually facilitate a, a strength into the tissues of the body, the fascia and the muscle, so that we can actually reestablish a more neutral joint position so that we can load into it. So either way, it's, the answer is not just putting an interface in i.e. a shoe uh, or an orthosis, 
but more with that, that could be one strategy, but equal to that, we need to also look at what we are doing in terms of the tissues of the body, how strong and how resilient they are and how we run. So all of those are part of that conversation. We need to restore the balance of the body through training. We need to make sure that we're taking a progressive approach in, th in through running so that we're not doing too much too soon. And we may indeed have an orthotic, but if we do have an orthotic, make sure that it's properly posted for your foot uh, with an individual like a physical therapist, um, uh, primary health care physician, a podiatrist, someone who can actually go in and properly post an orthosis for your foot. So that would be a good start and something that I would recommend looking at.